I often get asked, what's the saddest moment of Park to Prem? And it changes often, and sometimes I forget about moments. I'm not sure I'll forget about this moment. Tyler Forbes has retired. <sighs> the highest all-time goal scorer for the British Virgin Islands. 48 goals to his name. 35 years old. Yeah, he's not played in over 10 years at club level, but he's had a great international career. He was one of the first players we ever signed at the club. He was with us in season one. And now many, many years later, he's retired before I even get to play in the Champions League. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. I'm struggling. But whilst there might be some tears of sadness shed for Tyler Forbes' retirement, there's also some tears of joy, of excitement, of anticipation, because I'm wearing yellow, the thumbnail's yellow. Today is a transfer special. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. We are back with the start, I guess, of season number 16 here at Guernsey. Last year, two pieces of silverware, top four finish, Champions League football has been confirmed. We've got a stadium expansion on the way where we are going to be pretty much maxing out the potential capacity of the Guernsey Stadium. There's a lot to look forward to this year. Now, you might notice the date in the top right corner. It's the 22nd of June. Ordinarily, this could be the halfway point in a transfer special, but I've been delaying and delaying and delaying. And rather than getting transfer business done early, I want to see the season tick over, us officially become a Champions League team, and then see who we might be able to attract. That isn't to say I've already not started doing some dealings though because we have had two players leave the club already the first Jakub Gaspar talked about wanting to let this guy go the Slovakian next gen winner once upon a time was just a player who'd hit his potential it didn't seem like he was going to improve we hadn't seen him take a step forward he'd been on the fringes of the first team squad two goals and 16 in the Premier League Bournemouth who are stuck in the championship who failed to get promoted last year despite a media prediction of first um they decided he was worth £25 million. Pounds. I'll be honest, I'm not sure he is worth £25 million, pounds, but I'm very glad to sell him to a team who aren't even in the same division as us. The only other player who has already left the club is Sebastian Dabblstein Flegard, the Danish international who last year was on loan at Celtic and played 27 league games. Celtic last year finished second to Rangers. This year he's gone to Rangers. I can't imagine how that's going to be received between the two old firm clubs. So those are two deals that have already left the club. In terms of how the finances look, £155 million in the bank, £91 million transfer budget. Talked about it a little bit last episode. We're at a point now where, whilst I would like to bring in some younger players, with our reputation going up, with us playing Champions League football... I want to think we have the pulling power to bring in some ready-made players. And well, speaking of which, I might have already found one such player. We should talk about this man. Ethan Chapman, English international, plays for Manchester United. I've agreed to sign him for £40 million. During the negotiations with him, Manchester United lowered the asking price to £35 million for him, which annoys me a little bit, but I like to believe in my head that means they wanted to sell him to someone else cheaper rather than to us for £40 million. I think Manchester United are scared of us, and I think when you look at this guy as a player who is a left-footed player, who can play at striker, who can play out on the right-hand side, cutting in on his left foot, he is just the natural progression from Gaspar. If Gaspar's leaving for 25 million, I think Ethan Chapman at 24 years old is a rather logical replacement. And in fact, you might remember we talked about it last episode where I would like to improve the team. Right attacking mid was an area that I identified as a spot I would like to make a step forward in. It's a spot that is currently vacated. Uh, I do actually have the option to confirm the Ethan Chapman signing. And what better way to start a transfer special? than to actually confirm a transfer. And in fact, I was looking for the drop-down menu bit. Uh, it turns out I've actually got the inbox item here where we can confirm it. He was transfer listed by Manchester United. He was Manchester United's second highest goal scorer last season in all competitions, albeit only with 10 goals. Didn't get that many starts, but was very clinical in front of goal. And I think he's going to be a good addition to the team. Even if he doesn't improve that much, whilst he doesn't really have the best of mentals, he kind of has the, the mentals of a cabbage. What he's got in terms of pace, in terms of finishing, and just in terms of attacking threat, I think he's going to be rather valuable to us. And on top of that, I know I mentioned it already, he is an England international. And speaking of England internationals, let's start with some more good news here. Big Knot here, Sweeney here, Cadman. 
Also in the England national team setup, three caps he's managed to get over the summer already. I believe there are currently World Cup qualifiers going on. And I mean, when you look at the England national team now, we have five Guernsey players in the team. That is more than any other team across the world, which uh, I don't know. To me, that feels significant, especially because when you sort by age... There are a lot of the younger players in the squad as well. Now, you might have spotted another player who's in the England national team setup is Hakan Riddenhaugen. Can you remember this guy? He was like part no Norwegian, I think part, part Kosovoan. We were looking at him at one point. He was playing for Bournemouth. He actually moved for £34 million to Villa this year in the championship. Had half a season there. Didn't play amazingly. And I was considering making a move for him until I scouted him further and my scouts have told me... He's not actually that good. I mean, if we believe the scouts. The scouts could be wrong, granted, but when you look at that potential ability, he is not worth £50 million. And incidentally, if you do want to compare Sweeney with Hacken, because I appreciate that is a pretty legitimate request, there is the comparison between the two players. Would you take the guy in blue for £50 million, or the guy in green for £75 million? I'll let you decide. Now, I must admit, the start to this transfer special is a little unorthodox. Of course, last episode, we had the Conference League final. We did a bit of a season recap there. In terms of the expectations going into this season, the board want a top half finish for season 16. I now want to be a mainstay of European football. Do I think it's realistic to expect us to get Champions League football each and every year? I don't think it's going to be easy, but considering it's often going to be the top five teams that get that Champions League football because of the new European system... I think we are a team at this point that probably should be targeting top five every year. Now, just having a little look at our squad for this year. Right now, it's a little on the larger side. Jan Volashak has come back from his loan spell at Leicester. Played for Leicester. Leicester didn't do very well. I don't think he was entirely to blame, but he wasn't exactly amazing. At 20 years old, my ears are open to any potential bids for him, I think. His current value is 52 million. There is some interest in him as well, so he could be a player we look to move on. And the other player who was out on loan this year was actually the man we picked up in January in Manasiev, the Macedonian international. He looks really, really solid. I think he could be a good little backup player this year. You might be sat there thinking, back up to who? Who's he going to step in for? I'm glad you asked. Now, this might be a controversial decision here. I think I have to sell Josip. I don't think JV is worth 99 to 109 million pounds. Apparently he has already fulfilled his potential. Now incidentally, Everton are the only team interested in him right now. I did have a little bit of a transfer saga earlier on this summer that I nearly came back from. I actually accepted a bid of 83 million pounds for JV here from Arsenal. Then he turned down Arsenal. He was not very happy off the back of that and he's still crying now. Mm, I would like to get rid of him this summer, I think. And I know to some people that will seem mad, but I think this is a situation where you need to ignore the star ratings. Star ratings are lies, everyone. And considering this year he only played half the Premier League games for us in a season where we finished third, ultimately, I don't feel like he's this imperative player that we build around entirely. I feel like it'd be sensible to let him go. Another man who I did discuss selling was Alexander Kovacevic here, who is not a bad player, the Serbian, but he's the kind of jack of all trades, master of none. He's got these okay attributes across the board, but they don't really suit him to any one role. With his current value, I think he's a player worth selling. With Manasiev and Volashak in the team, we do have a squad of 28. Before I go too crazy signing anyone, I think it probably is in our interest to move some players on, get to the date where the Premier League season ticks over, we officially enter season number 16, and then review our prospects in terms of potential signings. So I did just offer out Joseph for an unspecified amount, just to see if there was any interest. Apparently, he's pleased and interested in going to Brentford. I'm going to be annoyed if I can't get a similar amount of money from Brentford as we did from Arsenal when we negotiated from them before. Worth noting, in this universe... Uh, Brentford do have a tycoon owner, so I'm going to try and fleece them here. He is valued at a lot of money. I know Brentford have a lot of money. I would like... How much would I like? £85 million. They've locked in 57. I don't know if that's enough to make me sell. I don't think he's a £57 million player, but I just feel like if we're patient, we can probably get more money for him. Uh, Leipzig have also come in with a bit of £49 million. I'll I'll try £80 million with them and see what they say. They've locked in 54. I mean, here's the thing. I don't think JV is worth 54 million pounds. I'm sure there'll be some people that disagree. Don't get me wrong. He's got amazing passing, amazing vision. 
But there are lots of players with that kind of ability in those areas out there. It's not like he's a one in a million player. Ah, what do I want to do? Let's see if Leverkusen are interested in their 80 million. Uh, the answer is no. Okay, so the highest bid I got was from Leipzig and from Brentford, but they're not high enough. I'm going to reject the offers and instead I'm just going to offer him out for 85 million and see if we get any nibbles. I had an 83 million pound bid from Arsenal already. It's still early on in the transfer window. We don't have to rush to sell him right away. I've had more bids. The bids are more money, but it's not that much of an improvement. I asked for 85. Brentford have bid 51. Brentford, how about 77 million? They've offered 61 million. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Leipzig have bid 51. I'll go back to them with 80. They've locked in 56. Brentford are the team willing to offer more money. Oh, it's just... I mean, it's still... It is really good money. Do I think he's going to get those international appearances for Serbia? I mean, almost certainly. He's already got 19 caps. I'm going to reject it. There was part of me that thought about accepting the offer, then just delaying it again and again and again. But actually... I think patience this summer will pay off. We'll offer him out for 80. We'll lower it a little, see if maybe Brentford come up closer to our valuation. But yeah, I hope I'm not going to regret this. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel there's a bit more money to get out of him. I mean, Brentford have come in with a bid of £48 million now. How about this? After one international game, you pay me £25 million and I want £55 million up front. That's less money than they offered earlier on on the same day that I'm on now. No, thank you, Brentford. I'm not having you take the Michael. A few people might have spotted this, by the way. Recently updated our director of football, and I've got in... Is it Bagiristain? I No idea how to say this guy's name. I feel like I should know how to say his name, because this man is director of football in real life for Man City. He's also been director of football for Barcelona, and he's a reasonably well-established footballer, albeit before I was born. I mean, he's a blooming good director of football. I am concerned he's going to retire soon, but yeah, he looks quite happy. He's got a bit of granddad energy about him, and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside whenever his face pops up. Just on the topic of staff members, Antonio Conte I've got as a scout. That again happened this year. Now, you might be wondering, Jack, what are these numbers? After your scout, well, it's his adaptability, judging player ability, and then judging player potential, like the three values that are important for a scout. And in fact, this is something that I did years ago and I forgot that I used to do, but I've gone back to using this year. But on the recruitment team, I basically have every single scout nicknamed with what their attributes are. It can be useful when you're setting out scout reports. Say you find a wonder kid that you're interested in. We'll go with Augustin Trinidad here. When you go to scout and then assigning a scout, the scout that you can assign, you can see their actual attributes on this screen. So because this guy is an 18-year-old in Uruguay, I probably want someone who's got high adaptability and high judging player potential. So in terms of scouts for the job, I think Simon Ward is the man. And uh, yeah, that's why if you ever see random nicknames at the end of my scouts' names, it's because it's how good they are. Obviously, I do have to keep that up to date because staff attributes do change. But uh, I don't know. It's a useful little tip. Maybe someone at home is now going to be nicknaming all their scouts like I do. And to nickname your scouts, you just go to overview, then set nickname. Or if they've already got a nickname, edit nickname, then type it in. So uh, there you go. Another tutorial in a transfer special. I'm good at these. Fulham have made an offer for Jaime that could be worth up to £4 million. Apparently, he has no interest in joining Fulham. Uh, with Jaime, he's in the last year of his contract. He is going to run down his deal. I kind of want to keep him around because he's club captain. Obviously, great professionalism, really good determination. That said, he's not the only really determined player with good professionalism we've got in the squad. Gustavo Lemos has professional personality with 18 determination. Uh, Manny Wilford as well has professional personality. His determination is only 15, but that is still pretty good. And actually, if we look at the, uh, the squad hierarchy and look at the influential players, you can see Lemos, Wilford are two of the players at the top alongside Big Knot. It's nice to see some of the players with really good personality traits at the top of this pyramid because that does ultimately bleed down. And especially younger players, we'll just see natural progression in their personality based on the team leaders. If you've ever had a situation where first team players are randomly losing determination, it's probably because the players up there at the top of the hierarchy don't have good determination. I occasionally get asked about that. Th that's what's going on. Anyway, we've got the Premier League review here. You can see here, biggest overachievers was us. So pat on the back for me. Good season. Underachievers apparently was Brentford, 
who uh, finished 17th. That's a really poor season for them, especially because last year they finished 4th. From 4th to 17th, that is embarrassing. And Premier League signing of the season, Manny Wilford. What a man. Manny Wilford up there. Jao Grasser also up there, which I absolutely love to see because I do think Grasser is a really, really good player. But I don't know. I don't think there's any getting away from it. £7 million to Manny Wilford, England's number one. That, to me, just feels like one of the best signings we've made at our time at the club. He kept 13 clean sheets in 30 games. Just a shame he got injured and missed a couple of games, otherwise he could have been in there for the Golden Glove. Apparently the board wants to discuss improving the wages available for coaches. I mean, I'll be honest, when I look at our current coaching setup and our just general staff setup, don't think I need more money for coaches. We could spend the money elsewhere. Uh, improve the club's youth facilities. Whilst we appreciate your input, we feel our own proposal is a better idea. Dean, you do not know what you're talking about, mate. I love the fact that one of our expectations this year in the Champions League is reach the league table. Of course, it's the giant league table stage. Worth noting, we go straight into that round so I can sit here or stand here, technically, because I'm standing desk at the moment, and proudly say we've achieved our goal for the Champions League. Pat on the back again. Great job this season, Jack. So the Premier League table has reset. What is the season preview saying? What is our pre-season prediction? The answer is ninth place. Although we are tied with Newcastle in terms of odds who are in sixth. So we are up there this year. No players in the, the Media Dream 11 yet. One day that will happen and it will be a great day. And first games of the season I can see here have been scheduled. Everton at home, Southampton away, Manchester United away. It's not an easy start to the season. Cadman wants to discuss an improved contract. Uh, we can't afford it right now. That's a lie. I've just remembered Cadman, he's got three years left on his current deal. I've got an option to extend his contract by three years. So at the end of this year, we can just make his contract a five-year deal. Yeah, he's not getting a new contract this season, no matter how much he asks. Okay, I offered out JV to clubs for 80 million. Arsenal have bid 80 million. I didn't think they'd come back in for him. We're taking that and we're running. Accept and give ultimatum. No one else is matching that bid. I thought maybe we weren't going to get this deal done, but after the season ticked over, offered him out again. Oh, please don't turn down Arsenal. £80 million is madness. Have also been looking to move on Volashak. There's a little bit of interest in him, but no one really bidding the kind of money I was hoping we might get for him. So Lowe is asking price a little bit. He's the kind of player who may well have the potential to be a great player, but he's not really developed that much during his time at the club. He's going to turn 21 this summer, struggled in the championship this season, just gone. Kind of feel like we should cash in on him, especially because we've got so many other better centre-backs now. Obviously, this season I have discussed the idea that we may end up going back to the five-at-the-back system with three centre-backs and wing-backs, uh, especially in European games and more difficult league games. I do feel like those matches we didn't do that well in second half of last season. When you look at the list of centre-backs sorted by ability, if we could get even just 30 million for Volashak, I think it'd probably be a sensible deal to take because we are rather blessed in the centre-back department. Unsurprisingly, Leipzig, Leverkusen both turned down the opportunity to sign JV for £80 million. I can't imagine why. So if JV leaves for £80 million, which I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I have to believe that deal's going to go through, we're going to have about £130 million to spend. JV this season just gone. Didn't really play at Regista much. Mostly he played as that centre attacking mid. I'm just curious, actually. If we compare JV with Manasiev, who we're bringing in or bringing back from loan, is there much of a comparison to be had? I mean, JV is the better player, but he is also four years older, and we did pick up Manasiev for 11 million. I mean, it will give Manasiev regular first team football opportunities, I think, next year, which should be pretty big for the 18 year old. So here's how the best 11 is looking right now. Of course, Chapman, the latest addition to the team, with his addition, Big Knot, really drops down to the bench, but as a super versatile option who can play pretty much anywhere in the final third. Not sure if we would actually play him out on the left-hand side, although he could kind of semi-play there. Um, I think he will be a really valuable option. I think between him and Diallo, we've got two pretty good super sub options for a Premier League team. Um, elsewhere, of course, you've got like, Sula, who is another player who can play across that attacking mid department. So even with JV leaving... There's plenty of attacking talent out there. Given where we're at right now, I'm just sat thinking about how I would shuffle things around. And I'm thinking Jaime would probably move off the bench. Rojas would move on and I'd pick up a right back. 
Honestly, I think if we pick up a really good right back, the team is in such a good spot. Maybe I'm kidding myself. This has to be the year I find a right back. Is it just me or have I been saying that every single year? Of course, Rojas signed for £11 million to play right back. To be fair to him, seven assists in 32 games this season is not too shabby. But with passing and crossing being a weakness and comparing him with Giamfi, who this year got 12 assists from the left back position... I would like to bring in someone to play that right wing back area. And that's right, about 20 minutes into the transfer special, we're actually going to look at players to sign. I know I really shouldn't do this to start the transfer stuff, but I kind of just want to sort by transfer listed and see who's out there. See if there's anyone who's absolutely mad who I should be signing. I mean, Montero here, who plays for Brentford, is not bad. He's not £75 million good, though, is he? I say he's not £75 million good, and then I compare him with JV. We're selling for £80 million. And suddenly, £75 million seems like a bargain. Shame about the wages, though. I feel like it's a pretty optimistic and positive sign that when we look at transfer listed players, there is a load of Newcastle players listed here and also Manchester United players. Of course, both Newcastle and Manchester United missed out, I believe, on Champions League football last year. Indeed, they did. You can see here, Newcastle actually finished down the Conference League. So with that in mind, there's going to be a couple of players who are trying to force moves, trying to make that move to Champions League clubs. The question is, can I realistically afford their wages? And I'm looking through these Newcastle players and the fact that they're on like £220,000 a week, some of them thinking, I can't really afford them. Although Carlos Barreda here, he's very good. I don't need another striker. Not right. Let's look for a right back. One player who has caught my eye here is Daniel Archer. Now, he plays for Brentford, who, as we already discussed, finished just outside the relegation zone last year. He is on £195,000 a week, but at 26 years old, he is an absolutely phenomenal right back, already ready-made. Only downside really with him is the lack of ability to play wing back, but that is something we could train him in. I like him a lot. £54 million is not cheap, but he is a phenomenal player. They paid £51 million for him a few years ago. I mean, let's see. Will they just accept £54 million? It was never going to be that simple, was it? The fact they didn't immediately lock in the release clause probably means there's room for negotiations. I'm going to lock in a bid of £60 million. That feels far too steep for me, if I'm being honest. There must be better right-back options out there. Of the players we've scouted who can play right-back, he is the best player, or rather joint best, with Facundo Barboza, who mm, is not as exciting, is he? I am questioning how these two players can be given the same star ratings by our scouts. I feel like whoever gave me Barboza's report and gave him four-star credibility should be sacked or fined or something. I don't want to get too excited. There's PSG players showing up in my searches as realistic signings. Is this where we are now? How much do they want for Lucio? 119 to 146 million. Never mind. Andrea Monti here is not a bad player. He's not that good defensively, though. He's very, very good when it comes to his physicals, but... He's a bit of a one-trick pony, and I'm looking for a pony that can do multiple tricks. They need to be able to fetch, jump, sit, and stay. That's the minimum. I was going to say tackle. I mean, that would be useful for a right-back to have, but I feel like if a horse was tackling you, it's probably not a trick you want them to know how to do. That sounds like a lawsuit in the making. Is it bad that I'm bored of looking for right-backs? I've spent less than five minutes, my mind's going, we could just look at the transfer-listed players. I mean, this guy's wicked. He's great, except he's a left-back who can barely play right-back, and he's also left-footed and valued at 75 million. Murphy Kalonji here looks really good playing for Leeds United, but... He can't really defend. They signed him for £17 million. He didn't have a great year for them. I don't really fancy paying £66 million for him. Gillier here, I believe I looked at signing and then Atalanta beat me to him. I think he had a release clause of like four or £5 million. £4.7 million a year and a half ago. And now he's worth £55 to £84 million. I could have signed this guy for £4 million. He would have been the answer to the right-back issue, I think. He is probably more of a centre-back, but he could do a job at wing-back. Fernando Martin Ramos here just doesn't have a face. Don't, don't, don't know what happened to him. Maybe that's why he's so good. He's invisible. The other team can't see him. I mean, when you look through all of this, suddenly Archer for 100 million doesn't actually seem that bad. 
I can't believe I'm saying that. I will say on Archer, he has only just turned 26 like this month, like two weeks ago. So he's still got like maybe seven, eight years of service out of him. How much did we bid? We bid 60 million. Let's see what Brentford say. If I sold JV for 80 million and brought in Archer for 80 million, I don't think there'd be many people telling me that's bad business. As exciting as right backs are, I am just looking at this list of other players thinking maybe there's something here I should be looking at. Joaquin here is on £200,000 a week and he is not £200,000 a week good, but I mean he's just secure in the bag in Saudi Arabia, which I was going to say I respect. I don't know if I do respect it necessarily, but you know what Joaquin, you do you. Arsenal have now declared interest in JV, despite the fact they've already made a bid. I mean, I kind of respect it. Uh... I'm feeling optimistic that deal will go through. Our bid of 60 million for Arch has been rejected. How about this? I'll give you 50 million pounds up front, and then over the next three years, I'll give you 30 million. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. I could just type in 30, but that's too much effort. They want 16 million pounds after 50 games. Uh, how about I give you 55 million up front and then 30 million? That feels like a expensive offer but also probably an offer I have to make because I'll be honest he is the best right back in this universe that I have seen and he does actually want to join me I've not thought about his wages yet he is on £195,000 a week for comparison our current highest earner is on £90,000 a week I thought I'd got my problem solved I might have just created a whole new headache Apparently, Archer is unsure about negotiating terms. Hmm, okay, let's, let's discuss things. I'll make you a star player. Okay, well, if he was unsure, I've made him sure rather quickly. How much is he going to ask for? £275,000. That's... that's... I need water. I need water. Now, granted, I could have put it in a glass, but I just thought gym bottle. It says hydrate on it. Just a reminder, do make sure you're hydrating at home. Right, 275,000, I mean, we can't do that, mate. I, I, can he do that, Captain? I will give you, he's probably the best right back in the world. So he's 200,000 too much. That is a lot of money, isn't it? Does it have to be 200,000? Look, I'll give you a goal bonus. Like If you score goals, I'll give you a load of wonga. You £110,000 every time you score a goal. If we get relegated, you can leave for £100,000. If you hit 30 goals and assists combined, I'll give you a load of money for that too. I'll give you £2.2 .2 million. Pounds. 30 goals and assists. He will have earned that money if, if that's acceptable. <sighs> he wanted 275. I think if I go below 200, he's going to get very, very pissy with me. I'm going to try... What was he on? Was it 195 he's currently on? Yeah, 195. I'll give him his current wages. 195. He's locked it in with red and it's angry. How about 200? He said 250. How about 205? That's so much. Water's not strong enough. Water isn't strong enough for what I'm about to do. I've spent the last, like, decade looking for a right back in the desert. And a right back has come down from the heavens. And I'm basically having to sacrifice everything I own to harvest the power of the right back. Is he that good? He is really, really good. I'm just going to compare him with Jamfi on the other side. He is just way better. It's a five-year deal as well. The issue is going to be if I sign him for £200,000, loads of other players are going to want wage rises. I suppose the only thing on my side here is that so many of the current first-team squad are on deals for the next four years. In fact, the majority of the starters are on contracts for four years including this season. So I don't really need to negotiate new deals with them even if they come and ask for them. But when they do come and ask for them, they're going to want a lot of money. I suppose the question is, when we're in the Champions League, when we're, we're a big boy team, will I have the money to be able to pay them? And I think the answer is yes. Champions League money is going to be significant if we can get that regularly. Isn't this how Leeds went bankrupt like in the early noughties? They basically gambled on getting in the Champions League every year. Is that what I'm about to do? The other option would be to get Gillier here for like £55 million and then train him to play right wing back. But he is nowhere near as good, is he? But he does have 17 jumping reach. Danny Archer doesn't have that. Is Gillier even better than Rojas? There's going to be... Uh, I, uh, what would you do in my situation? I'm going to ask now that before I've made a decision myself. What would you do? I mean, Gilead is 
maybe better than Rojas. He's very good technically. But then again, Archer is really good compared to Rojas. So is it even a comparison to be had? I started this episode talking about how I was going to try and get a load of money for JV. I didn't think he was worth that much. And now I'm looking to spend that entire amount of money on a right back. I mean, the JV deal hasn't even gone through yet. He could still turn down Arsenal just to mess with me. I'm sat thinking there must be a better, cheaper right back. Maybe not better, just better value for money that isn't going to bankrupt the club. Everyone at Manchester United and Newcastle wants out. Who is Manchester United's right back? Roberto. I mean, he is rubbish. What about Newcastle United? Who's your right back? Malo Gusto. I mean, he's 34 years old and he's on a lot of money. He's not the solution. I've been asked if I want to confirm the Archer deal. We don't have the money to confirm this deal at the moment, so we will delay it a week. Imagine if after all this, JV just turns down Arsenal. I can confirm he's still talking to Arsenal. He's not happy here. Surely he's just going to leave us. Chelsea have made an offer for Lemos. They've offered me 70 million up front, 13 million in instalments and 4 million later. No, thank you. Call me crazy, but if JV is worth £80 million, Lemos has to be worth like hundreds of millions of pounds. Lemos wants to discuss not moving to Chelsea. What's up, mate? What's up? You need to play for a bigger club. We're going to be the bigger club, mate. I really want you to stay. What would it take for you to commit your future to the club? There's nothing I can offer. I really want to say I understand your reasoning for wanting to move. I'll let you know if they offer a reasonable amount. But I wish I could get a preview of what the reasonable amount could be. I'm afraid you're just too important to let go. Oh, he hate, he's going to hate me. He's gonna, I mean, we've had this situation before. Every summer we have a fight. We're like a couple with loads of red flags. We're not meant to be together, Gustavo. Yet here we are. Football season comes round and it's all hunky-dory again. He has got that £85 million release clause to clubs in the Champions League, but I believe, because we're in the Champions League, that release clause can't even be triggered. And he's also got four years left on his current deal, so if he didn't want to stay at the club, shouldn't have signed a five-year deal. I know I'm meant to be looking at right-backs or hitting continue so we know if JV's leaving. I'm still just looking at players transfer listed. Players like Romero here, who at 27 years old would be a phenomenal centre-back, but I don't need more centre-backs, do I? I need to have some self-control. I mean, this guy playing for Augsburg looks absolutely mad for £60 million. But I don't need a striker. But I'm also sat thinking, or oh, do I need a striker? But he would just eat up all Alanis' minutes, and I want to see Alanis develop. I think Alanis has mad potential. Like, he is one of the players, when you sort by current uh, potential ability, has some of the highest in the squad, some really good current ability as well. He's only 19. No, no, no. In Alanis, we trust. I might have found a right back. I might have found a right back. Pedro Oliveira, 26 years old, Portuguese player. Transfer listed by Real Madrid. It appears when the date went to the start of July, all of the, uh, the La Liga team just started deciding players they wanted to get rid of. Pedro here, I mean, he's not as good as Archer, but he's got some crazy physicals, some good technicals, but he can't tackle. Is that important for a fullback? I feel like Archer is just such a no-brainer of a transfer, but it's like a point of no return. As soon as you offer a right back £200,000 a week, there's no going back. You are basically saying, we are a Champions League club every year. At the same time, I'm comparing players here who are going to be on half the amount of money and cost half the amount and trying to draw comparisons. And there's no point in trying to do that because of course they're not going to compare to Archer. Hugo here is not bad, but he's left-footed and he is more of a centre-back than full-back. I mean, Nicolas Russo, if you want to stay at home wing-back so he's not going to go forward, he's probably not that bad. But in our system, I need a player who is going to get forward. He would be a good centre-back. He's on £475,000. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Andres Marquez here is apparently a centre-back. I say apparently because I'm looking at him thinking, mate, you were born to be a wing back, just no one's realised yet. Is he good? He's not good. He's just he's just fast. He's just he's the regen of Kyle Walker. Shins here is not bad, but he's he's not archer levels of good. By the way, I'm still waiting for JV to get back to me. Uh I'm I hope he's going to North London. I cannot believe this. Bournemouth have made a bid for Jaime of 24 million. Apparently he's got no interest in joining Bournemouth. You need to develop some interest in joining Bournemouth, mate. Please go. 
Please go. It'd be a great move. It'd be a great move. Accept the bit if you want, but I'm telling you, I have no interest. Mate, it's £24 million. Pounds. You've been a great servant. You've told me you're leaving on a free at the end of the year. You could help me secure the bag. And this is how you repay me. I'm accepting it. He's going to turn them down. I'm going to get upset later. Barcelona have made a bid for Diallo. Now, I promised Diallo I wasn't going to sell him. And... Well, I don't really want to sell Diallo, but given the fact we signed him for £6 million, you know, I'm a little bit interested to see what Barca might be willing to pay for him. So I'm just going to, you know, counter bid with £50 million. They might just throw it back in our faces, and if they do that, it's fine, because he's not going to want to move to them anyway. But if they accept it, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to make me optimistic. £50 million, please. Big Not wants a new contract. He's got three years left on his current deal. He's on £70,000 a week, mate. You don't need a new deal right now. You you don't need this. We can't afford it. That's a lie. We can afford it, but no. Okay, wasn't sure if this was or wasn't going to happen, but it is going to happen. JV is leaving us to go to Arsenal for £80 million. I've not even had given it a second thought there. I've just hit accept. He's gone. I'm lost for words. I, can, I can't believe we've got £80 million for him. So that is now a club record sale. Elsewhere, Sven Tavok Hag has left. Uh, who's he left? He's left uh, Clermont for £20 million. How much did we sell him to Clermont for? We sold him to Clermont for £21 million that he's, They've bought him for £20 million. I mean, do, do, how much money do we get from that? Oh, £100,000. Happy days. I mean, the real question now is, with £128 million in the bank, am I really about to confirm the signing of Daniel Archer? He is such a good wing-back. He is an elite wing-back, like one of the best wing-backs, I assume, in the world. He's not got an obvious gap in his game. His physicals are great. His mentals are great. He can tackle. He's 26 years old. He's only just turned 26. Super consistent performer. He's part English. The only minor downside is he cannot play right wing-back, and I would probably want to train him there. So, you know, I'm doing it. I'm, I might live to regret this. I Part of me wants to think, should we just wait until next episode? You know, should I sit on it? Should I just not side him? Then weigh up all the comments on YouTube, then decide. No, I've uh, the point of no return I described it as earlier. We've passed it. I've signed him. I feel sick. I've signed a right back. I hope you're happy at home. I will say now, when you look at this team, it's a very, very good team. And we are kind of at the point now where if I do want to make genuine big squad improvements, I've got to spend £80 million on certain positions, especially certain positions which have been problem areas for years we've not been able to deal with. I feel like now when I look at the goalkeeper and I look at the defence, it, it's rather strong. I think that's all that needs to be said. Also, it's another English player that we've signed. I didn't even really give that a consideration. We are just taking over the England national team. Maybe I should just try and catch... All the England national team players like Pokemon. I've said that half jokingly, but I'm looking at Henry Owusu Ansa here thinking, you'd be an okay backup goalkeeper. If I sign you, I could get rid of Francisco, who's on that got that contract with a mental clause in it, and everyone would be happy. That said, I'm not sure I want to try and sell Francisco, not, at least not right now. He's still got four years left on his current deal. If I did want a short-term striker option, Emre Tezgel is transfer listed. His goal scoring record is absolutely mad for the England national team. 42 goals in 39 games. He is about to turn 32 years old. His contract is up at the end of the year and he is on £175,000 a week. £48 million is too much. I mean, as we sit here right now, I have had to rejig the wage budget a little bit, but we still do have £60 million to spend. And there are a couple of areas of the first team which I look at and think, yeah, maybe there's a player or two we could shift on to, you know, free up some spots, raise some funds. I mean, if Jaime wants to leave for £24 million, if Barcelona want to bid £50 million for Diallo, I wouldn't complain. I'm just going to throw it out there. New club record signing. I feel sick. I didn't feel this unwell when I signed Craig Sweeney, but I suppose the difference is Craig Sweeney is only on £82,000 a week. Daniel Archer's on £205,000 a week. Barcelona did just come back in after I negotiated £50 million. They negotiated the exact same offer they'd already offered, not selling Diallo for that. Plus, I already told Diallo I wasn't going to sell him this summer. I've had to deactivate the standing desk. This episode's been too much for me, both mentally, physically. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Archer deal. I, I don't know what to think. On the one hand, there's the wages and the transfer fee. On the other hand, I'm looking at the overall balance thinking, 
well, we've still got 134 million in the bank, so is it that bigger a deal, really? Burnley fans, look away. Vincent Company has returned to Manchester City. But don't worry, it's not going to happen to the year 2037, so you got a while to wait. And if you're wondering the route that he took to get here, he was sacked as Burnley manager after promotion to the Premier League, managed Dusseldorf, managed Saint Etienne, Strasbourg, Stuttgart, Sevilla, and now. Man City. I don't know how he's got the Man City job, but to be fair to him, his actual attributes are rather good. With all the signings we've made, the squad size is now 28 players. I still want to get rid of Volosak, but there's not a load of interest in him. Um, he's one player who I would kind of like to let go. Uh, if Kovacevic goes as well, that's not too bad. Because we've brought in Archer to play right back, it does mean that Rojas can now become the centre defence and mid option as well. So Alexander here isn't so important. That said, the 20-year-old isn't exactly attracting a load of interest in the moment. at the moment, even if there are loads of interested parties. No one's actually bidding on him. So if I was to get rid of Volashak and uh, Kovacevic, that would leave me with a load of money, a first team that I'm happy with. Maybe tomorrow we just go Wunderkid signing. This is the first transfer window where I've not signed a load of players under the age of 21 yet. Of course, we get six every season. We could sign some of those players soon. Oh, Blackburn have made a bid for Rojas. Now, I promised Rojas I wasn't going to sell him. But Blackburn have offered £43 million. Pounds. Look, Roberto, I know I said I wasn't going to sell you, but it's it's a very good bid. It's a, it's a fantastic offer. The offer isn't good enough to be a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it'd be a great move for you. Except the he's doing a Jaime. That is now what I'm going to refer to it as, where a player has a bid for him that I accept and then he doesn't want to go. It is doing a Jaime. They bid... £40 million pound with a few extra bits. I'm going to ask for £20 million this year, and I want £35 million next summer. I'm being greedy here, but I don't think he's going to accept it anyway, so I might as well push my luck and see what I could get for him. I mean, £49 million pounds for Rojas. That's a pretty good offer, I feel like. Ah, oh, I kind of wish he'd accept it. I mean, he's not... We'll, we'll try and sell him. There's no chance he's actually leaving, though. If Rojas and Jaime left the club, we'd have like an extra 40, 50 million pounds just to have some fun with. Sadly, I don't think they're going to be going anywhere. I was just taking a look at this list of players here, just sorted by ability who are out there. Mohamed Chergui. Chergui? I don't know how to say his name. Uh, this guy looks really good. 25 years old, decent value. Wages are not too extortionate. Currently plays for Rennes. Yet to make any kind of international appearances for France's main national team. But he looks really, really good. Super consistent performer, thrives in important matches. He basically looks like a better version of Vucevic. I don't know how many times today I've compared Vucevic against other players, but I'm doing it again here. The counter must be rather high at this point. I mean, when you compare these two players, I think one of the players is better than the other. You can play a centre attack in mid. That's probably where you'd play him. P potentially as a shadow striker, maybe more as a playmaker type player, but he could play out on the right-hand side as an inside forward cutting in on his left foot. To be honest, he could also play as a really, really good lone striker, I think. Um, has some really good mental, some decent physicals. His technicals are absolutely phenomenal as well. 14 finishing with 17 off the ball and 16 composures, nothing to scoff at. Apparently valued at 49 to 57 million. If I spent 40... Nine million pounds on this guy, would that be mad? Let's see, I'll bid 49. They've accepted it right away. Probably could have negotiated that more in hindsight. I mean, Mohamed here just looks like a really, really, really good player. Super versatile attacking midfield option. Uh, has a really, really good personality as well with 16 determination. Love that a lot. Only downside really is he can't jump. But you know what? Well, I can't jump that high either, so I can relate to his struggles. Apparently he wants 145 to 200,000 pounds. See, this is the issue. This is why I didn't want to give Archer 200,000 pounds because I think this is going to influence a lot of other players' expectations. Let's see how much he might want. I'm going to try lowering his play time just to see if that would lower his wage demands, but not going to have any luck there. He wants 170,000 pounds. What have I done? Basically, in signing Daniel Archer, I've now set a new expectation for player wages. I suppose the one positive thing that we can take from all of this is I don't need to sign that many new players. Um, you know, the team in its current form is very, very good. I do feel like with Chigui here, 
he's probably not £170,000 a week good. Or is he? He is very good. I guess I can make negotiations and then I'll leave it open to the floor that is the YouTube comment section to tell me about how much of an idiot I've been today spending money. Some people want me to spend more money, but some people are annoyed when I do spend money. I can't please everyone is what I've learnt. And I can't please Mohammed here. He wants a lot of money. I can't go higher than 150 thousand pounds a week i'll add a relegation release clause if we get relegated i'll sell you for 10 million he's accepted that Hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week is a lot of money for a player to sit around on the bench but would he sit around on the bench i mean right now the player who plays on the right hand side as the attacking option is chapman if i sign chapman for a load of money just to sit on the bench I mean, when you compare the two players, there isn't a world of difference between them. I think on overall balance, Chapman has way, way, way better physicals, slightly better attacking, but Chergui is just more of a creative option. I don't think he's worth £150,000 a week, but we have money to spend. I've made a decision today. We're starting to spend it. Again, you've probably left a lot of comments if you've been obeying my instructions so far this episode. Let me know what you think of this one. And you know what? I think with the Mohammed dilemma, we'll leave things for today. It's been a stressful episode for me. I've made some decisions that make me feel a little uncomfortable, but we've improved the squad. I don't think anyone can accuse it of getting worse, which I feel like at this point, having just finished third, is probably a good thing. Do also make sure to hit the like button. That does help these episodes get pushed far and wide, especially the transfer specials. They're a good jumping on point for people. So if you've jumped on in this episode, maybe you fell off Park to Prem lately, the least you can do, because you've got to the end of the video, you've clearly enjoyed it, is like it. So more people like yourself find this one. Besides that, guys, have a lovely rest of your day. We will be back tomorrow to end a week of Park to Prem, to end a transfer saga to end all sagas that has just been this summer window i've lost the plot i feel unwell today's episode's just been me documenting a breakdown i'll see you tomorrow for more of the same i hope not i can't spend that much money on another right back can i